Okay. Hi, Kirk. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? I'm hanging in there like the rest of everybody else. Exactly. Um, day by day, but we're uh, we're pushing forward. Same here. Same here. It's all you can do in this kind of time. Uh, Absolutely. Well, thank you for hopping on here to chat about what's happening in the mortgage industry right now. And um, before I go even further, I'm going to just say that it's April 22nd. And I say that because there are so many changes happening in the world every single day. Um, and I thought it would be a great opportunity to talk with you about what is happening in the mortgage industry. Well, so, um, tell us I what that is. I said, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Of course, anytime. Thank you for being here and taking time out of your crazy busy schedule. Um, so just real quick, tell us a little bit about who you are and about your business. Sure. So I run a mortgage brokerage and I've been doing this for about 25 years. My company is First Commerce Financial. We are in Sarasota, Florida, and we have uh, we had 20 people working for us. We've had to furlough some people just because of the way things have gone over the last four or five weeks. Right. Um, but we are licensed in California, Arizona, Michigan, and Florida. I'm a Michigander. Wow. And, and moved down here, it's been about two and a half years ago. Moved down to the beautiful state of Florida and absolutely loving it. Uh, we have two offices here in Sarasota and just an incredible place to be. It's vibrant, the economy is rocking. It's right. warm, obviously the weather is spectacular. That helps. <laughs> Building here, there's new construction here. There's, there's second homes, investment properties. There's just all kind of real estate happening here. It's a great spot to be. And there's, you know, a thousand people moving to Florida every single day. So that certainly helps our business out. <laughs> it does, yes. Excellent. Um, okay, so let's dive in a little bit to what's going on in the mortgage world right now. Okay. Um, where this is usually a popular question for for consumers but what are the current interest rates right now or what can you tell us about that a uh, 30 year money is around 3.5 percent wow yeah it's uh, incredible right now we're there's a ton of opportunities out there for people to do all kinds of different things yeah. um is about it, five, you, go ahead do you is this a record low i mean i know they're near record lows but is it an actual record low we hit that about six weeks ago okay yeah. and that was for about two or three days okay. and then they shot right back up uh to about four percent and then okay. they've settled back down over the last couple of weeks to the spot we're in right now good um is it a good time to refinance it is so we have a ton of people um we are having our biggest month ever in our company's history so this is year 13 for us and we're scheduled to close around 55 loans this month wow and, and probably, a finance or do you have a little bit of everything right now we have a little bit of both okay but for next month in the remaining probably i'm thinking about the next 12 to 24 months is going to be a heavy heavy refinance market yeah where the interest rates are going to be artificially lower mm -hmm. even lower than where they're at right now okay. the people who are refinancing right now are somewhere above four and a quarter four and a half percent okay wow and taking money out because we have record high equity levels right now so people are cashing out to consolidate debt uh, we have a ton of divorces believe it or not going off right now and um there's a lot of home improvements projects that are happening. So people are refurbishing their home, you know, that maybe haven't touched it in seven to 10 years. Right. That makes sense. And people are home right now. So they, they have the time to, to do those home improvement projects. Good. Well, they're looking at all the nuances in their house. You know what I right. mean? Like, oh my gosh, I've got, to, I've been meaning to fix that. Right. Exactly. Now's the time. <laughs> yep. Um, Good. Have you seen any changes um, from lenders in order to help stabilize the economy? Um, so what is happening right now is the Treasury has come in and they're spending money every day to buy mortgage backed securities. They're basically purchasing these to artificially keep these rates low. Okay. They know that 
if the rates go up above that 4% mark, you're basically going to wipe out purchase activity. Meaning people are going to have a trouble qualifying for a new home. Right. So they're trying to do everything they can in their power to keep the rates artificially lower. Okay. That's the one positive that's happened over the last four to six weeks. Most of the news in the lending environment has been restrictive, meaning lenders right. are tightening guidelines, they're scared of forbearance, and they're scared of prepayment issues, meaning uh, let's say you, you got into your mortgage two or three months ago in the rates dip in a month, and then you take advantage and you pay off that old mortgage to go to a lower one. Well, the guy that did the mortgage two or three months ago is stuck going, uh, what just happened? Right, okay. So we have prepayment risk and we have uh, forbearance risk right now. That's really uh, restricting things more than normal. Okay, and when you say restricting things, can you explain that a little bit more? Like what, what's being restricted? So what they, the first thing they do is they go right to the credit score. And they say, um, when we look at a loan application, we're looking at your credit, mm -hmm. your income, and your assets. So the first thing they'll attack is they will raise the credit score requirement. Okay. To get into the loan. So um, 620, 600, 580 was normal okay. about six okay. weeks ago. Now it's 640, 660, 680. Okay. Uh, the next part is the income component, which is, you know, we have 22 million people that were unemployed. Right. Um, so we're struggling with that part of it, meaning they're verifying two, three, four times throughout the loan application process to ensure that you're still working. Well, that's, that makes sense. And that's for, I mean, I would assume it's for good reason for the borrower also. You know, it, it is. Yeah. Okay. So what, what that means is one of the questions you're going to ask is how is the, how is the <laughs> timeline of all of this? Right. We, we were closing loans six weeks ago about every 21 days. Okay. So now we're that's probably. It. That's, that's really good. Yeah, we, it was fast. It was moving. It was humming. There was no signs of COVID anywhere. Right. And COVID comes along and it really slows everything down along with all of the refinance activity um, when the rates drop. So now we're running about 30 days. It's not that bad. Which is still really fast in my opinion. You know, as an agent, when we are writing contracts, um, and I think this is kind of just a general rule of thumb for all the agents, at least in this area, is we give at least 30 to 45 days in the contract. So, you know, there is plenty of time. So we're not, you know, waiting at, to the last minute or, or rushing in, you know, at, at the last minute to do it. So 30 days, I think is still awesome. It's still really good and fast. If someone needs to, you know, get a place and get in super quick, um, a month is good. Time. They, they get priority purchase transactions with all the lenders. Right. Well, because people need to get into a new home. <laughs> right. There's a family that needs a roof over their head, right? Right. Exactly. Yes. That should take priority. That's good. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, have down payment requirements changed at all? Uh, no. Um, we're still able to, believe it or not, we can still do zero down on the VA or the USDA loan. Okay. Um, three and a half percent down on FHA. Yeah. percent down on conventional. So I would say no. More of what's changed is the debt to income ratios. Okay. Have been reduced. Okay. Meaning they've tightened that way. Okay. And so as long as their debt to income ratios are low, they've got good income, great credit score, borrowers are still able to borrow. They are. Yeah, that's your dream right there. So we're always coaching people on how to keep the credit scores up. What, you know, depending on what you do for a living, a lot of these folks are self-employed and so they need some coaching or some guidance on how they're going to set up their tax returns and their pay structure. So they're okay to, to purchase a home at some point later on down the road. Sure. Sure. Makes sense. Um, we've talked a little bit about this. So I'm just, it might sound a little repetitive, but um, in your opinion, is it a good time to buy a home? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, I, I think what you're going to see is maybe about a 5% reduction here over the right. short term. 
Short term, I think, too. Yeah, very, very short term. Yeah. There's an opportunity right now to hop in if you're able to do it and take advantage of uh, to get a deal because I think when we come back out, it's going to go right back up and it will continue to appreciate. The, um, I was reading some numbers this morning about the purchase mortgage application index. I follow that closely. Yeah. So we were running since COVID hit, I think we're week five or six. The mortgage applications for purchases are off 26% year over year. Okay. Wow. So um, that is, that's a big number. Yeah. So that tells me that there's opportunities out there to be had if you're a buyer and you're ready to go. Absolutely. And there's still, you know, there's people that need to buy and there's people that need to sell because of whatever their situation is. So those are, you know, the people that you're seeing, I believe right now. Um, yeah, I would not pull your home off the market. No, no, not at all. Um, you know, we've, I think everyone at this point has made um, changes and adaptations to how they run their business and how they're handling showings. And, you know, it's, there's more virtual tours out there. There's, you know, more safety precautions as far as agents and consumers wearing masks and wearing gloves and, you know, being very conscious about not touching anything. Um, so, you know, that part is, it seems to be working and, and it, activity is still happening. And um, even now, you know, we're starting to hear a little bit about the state opening up and, you know, in certain phases. So, you know, you, you can feel it. Right. Like, absolutely. I can, I can actually feel the difference of this week versus the last three. Yep. Yep. It's changing. So starting right. to come out of their hibernation and yeah. <laughs> the phones are blowing up again. Yep. Exactly. Yes, I agree. Um, and that's good. So um let's see i'm just looking at a note here um we talked about qualifying what do you need in terms of credit score we've talked about that um let's see are you offering any special incentives right now to healthcare healthcare workers or anybody else yeah so our first responders our okay. teachers and our active military and our vets we have a no appraisal fee for them awesome so that's about 500 bucks off right. And then awesome. we have no junk fees whatsoever. Right. We don't charge an underwriting fee, an admin fee, a processing fee. So our fees are significantly lower than most out there. So yeah. what we do as a broker is I work with about 10 different lenders on any given day. So I'm going to figure out your situation and place you with the lender that I know will handle your situation best and give you the lowest rate and fee combination. Awesome. Um, and thank you for offering incentives to the healthcare workers and first responders. That's huge. Um, especially my wife's a first responder, so. Yeah. Yep. Were you? Uh, my wife's a nurse. Oh, I thought you said you were. I'm like, what? Nope. No, <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Your wife is, yes. So you, you have the firsthand experience with that. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you. Thank her for her experience and, and thank her for, you know, being on the front lines for everyone. I will. Um, Let's see, what is some advice that you can tell consumers to do right now if they are looking or thinking to buy a home? Okay, so from the purchase end of it, mm -hmm. um, the first question I'll always ask them is when's the last time you had your credit ran that you got to see a copy of? Okay. And you know, a lot of people will see like Credit Karma, they'll see something like that. Right. But I, I wanna get a tri-merged report where the three major bureaus are reporting and so I can get a feel for what is on there. A lot of times people don't know there's like a collection or a, a medical bill or something like that, that we can start to work on. Mm -hmm. Or I'll begin coaching on um, the credit cards, how they use their credit cards, okay. where their balances are at, do they lease their cars, do they have a, a car loan, like an installment loan. So I really wanna get in and see how they're running their budget. Okay. And I want to help them understand you may be running it this way, but in terms of how the underwriters view it, I want to help you move over into a, maybe a different lane okay. to get you in a better position because credit score adjustments for the interest rates are a big, big deal. So for example, we have a 700 credit score versus like a 680. 
that could be a 1% adjustment of the loan amount. Wow. You're borrowing $300,000. That could be a $3,000 adjustment, $3,000 price adjustment to you, the consumer. So we talk a lot about that, how that affects them. Awesome. Secondly is, um, you know, we'll talk about, you know, the month, the month budget, meaning, all right, so how much is spent on gas? How much is spent on eating out? How much is spent on entertainment? Mm -hmm. Can we make some, are we, are we funding our 401k too much? Believe it or not, we have a lot of that where people will max it out and wow. forget about it. And then we'll reduce the 401k contribution for a period of time to get some liquid cash, or they'll keep, uh, they're going to borrow the monies from their 401k to use this as the down payment. So there's a lot of different things we can do just to kind of help coach them. Our first initial call is about 10 or 15 minutes. We just do a little gathering of information and figure out where are you coming from and where are you trying to go? And then we'll start doing the coaching after that. And we do, most of this is on Zoom, just like we're doing right now. Yep. And that's the way, um, you, you probably done a lot of that anyway prior to this. Um, but that's certainly the, one of the um, best ways to handle business right now, too, while we're still under that stay-at-home order. Um, but I'm sure you've always done that because you're big into video, right? We love video, yes. It is yeah. just so important to, you know, see the body language. Right, have face-to-face -face time. <laughs> yeah, well, you want to see how they're receiving the information that you're giving Sure. You can then fill in some of the blanks where we're just reading the body language. Right. That's true. That's very true. Um, well, it sounds like um, your first initial step into coaching consumers is to really help them um, get their financial um, position in place and in order to improve their credit scores and to make sure that they're um, everything's in line to have a low debt to income ratio. And even if you have to move things around a little bit, um, is that kind of what I'm hearing? Yeah. Financial literacy is such a big deal for us because it's not being taught in high school. It's not being taught right. in college. So these folks that uh, leap into the business world or into, I'm sorry, their, their professional environment, they don't know how to manage their money. That's so true. Yeah. And they're not talking about it because it's not something that's, fun to talk about right we have I, an advantage where i get to see all of that stuff so to us it's just common like it's just matter of fact the one thing i want to throw out here though on the refinance activity you're going to see a ton of it jill where um, what we do is say just text us or facebook message or email us a copy of your mortgage statement okay and then what we do is we'll put that into our rate watch tracking system every month they get an email shows what their home value is shows where their mortgage balance is it's interactive and they can adjust buttons to say if i spent 10 bucks a here or 50 bucks there what will it do but more importantly it gets into our system where if it hits your target rate i'm reaching out to you and saying hey we're close get ready it might be time to go okay that's awesome that's so amazing. that's that's been a big deal for us over the last three or four uh, weeks of we're just okay. collecting mortgage statements and getting them all ready to right. go when it's time for them to go. Okay. That's amazing. That's such a good opportunity for, for them. Um, well, what I'll do is I will link all of your contact information with this video so that okay. people know how to reach you. And if they're interested in, in, um, you know, having their mortgage and having their home values tracked um, to make sure that they know when the right time is for them to refinance, then they can do that with you. I'm going to get, uh, after this call, we'll do a follow-up and I'll show you how the system works. Okay. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I know you're super busy. Um, and thank you for providing all of this really helpful information to people and kind of clearing things up. I know, you know, I've gotten a lot of questions like, is the world in real estate and mortgages, you know, come to a complete stop? It hasn't <laughs> at all. Um, there's still a lot, a lot of activity. And even as things change and progress as we you know, start to reopen the state, you know, I think activity is going to pick right back up. So 
Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. And, Thanks for um, having me. Of course, of course. And like I said, I will um, link your personal, or not your personal, your um, contact information and how they can reach you and your Facebook and all that good stuff so that people know um, how to get in touch with you. Okay. Thanks, Jill. Okay. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. All right. <laughs> okay. Bye.